Today we're going to be going over Linux and Windows, the pros and cons of having it here. Because many people have realized I've been in Windows a lot lately. And a lot of that deals with WSL. It has gotten to the point where whatever I want to do, I can do from here. I just expand this out. I launch this WSL machine and I can have all of my normal Linux utilities at my fingertips. Graphics acceleration does work. I can even launch, I think, Caden Live. Let's go ahead and launch it. Oh, I don't even have it. Let's just show you a quick sample of what I'm dealing with here. And then let's talk about the pros and cons of this because there's so many things about it that uh, most people don't understand. The first thing is, I said in a prior video, it's actually a little faster than native Linux. And it depends on what you're doing. But that was not a false statement. A lot of the Linux users got kind of mad at me for that. But the reason why it's actually a little bit snappier and faster is because there's a lot less happening within this container, this Linux container that we're dealing with here. The big thing that's missing that gives it that extra oomph is there is no system D. Now, right here, we're running into a little error. Let's see if we can't uh, fix this up. And now let's try to install that Caden Live. I bet it won't have a problem this time around. Now you'll see here, this is a roughly, I think, was it three, three or 400 packages that we're installing? And it flies through it because there is no system D. There's a lot of things that are, aren't really needing to happen on the background. There is no init system, period, which makes this extremely powerful because a lot of the things we're doing in a productivity setting is pretty much streamlined. So a lot of folks that were just using Linux for uh, programming or possibly productivity type work, some of this can be done through WSL and it's so much easier and valuable now. Uh, as you see here, those three or 400 packages that pretty much happened in what, a minute's time? So when I say Linux in Windows is actually a little faster than just being in native Linux. It depends on what we're doing. When it comes to updating and installing packages, yeah, it is actually. And let's launch Caden Live just so you can see what this looks like. And look at that. Here we go. <laughs> now, obviously, theming and some other stuff are a little off, so I'd probably actually change this around and say, hey, uh, let's, uh, let's see, Windows style. And we could run a config wizard, change this. You do see NVIDIA hardware acceleration is on, which is kind of impressive. And I've actually taken uh, video files and actually scrubbed them here. Now, obviously, most times you're not going to want to run a program like Caden Live here. They're, they do make a Windows version that you'd be better off suited for than running it through WSL. I just kind of want to show it as an example. The same can be said. Some people were like, hey, show us a game in WSL. And I'm like, it's kind of pointless. But... With the same time, there are some things that Linux has that Windows doesn't. I'm, I'm thinking like Tux Racing. Let's go ahead and install that. And we'll just do this. Say yes. See what it pulls in here. This is a little bit of a bigger package with it being about 50 megs. Let's see how long it takes. Here comes the install. And now let's launch some Tux Racing. And there we go. You saw there was a little bit of lag there. There's still some issues with uh, little things, but as far as what you get, and you get the hardware acceleration and a lot of things that you need to do, uh, most people that are gonna be using Linux in Windows aren't gonna be necessarily playing Linux games, but more so doing it for different builds, whether it's programming, uh, just finding Vim and other things that I am used to having that command line to do SSH and, and a lot of like SCP transfers, all these things that I use for servers is all right at my fingertips. And I'm able to do everything I normally would do inside of a Linux box now in Windows. So that's kind of like just a couple examples of WSL and this is the pro section, but there are some noticeable drawbacks that we need to talk about. But the big thing here is it's everything in one system. You can game, you can program, you can do all the stuff that you've been meaning to do very easily without any compromises. Now, I wanted to kind of push this to the limit and see, hey, can we get like a one-to-one? -one? Because that would be kind of insane. So I did do like a vert manager and launched into this and ran an entire virtual 
machine through WSL. Now, obviously, that is not recommended because WSL at the end of the day isn't a virtual machine or maybe it's, it's very much like it, but it's like a nested virtual machine at this point. And the performance of this aspect of it was not good. So it's not perfect for everything. This is one drawback to it that I saw. Obviously, if you're doing virtual machines, you probably want to do something else. Uh, most people will be using VMware Workstation or possibly even like VirtualBox. The other thing is there's no system D. I said that as a positive because it sped things up. There's no init system, but that does have its drawbacks. So let's say you wanted to run like a service. So let's say we do system control power off or whatever it might be, none of this is gonna work. We do system control, status, SSHD, or whatever it might be. It's never gonna be able to do anything because there is no init system. Yes, it makes it a little faster, but it also comes with drawbacks as I can't set up anything like here. Now what I could do is like maybe a cron tab dash E and do like a crony and set up those tasks where they'd auto fire off at certain intervals. So there's ways around it but it's not a perfect solution by any means. I still much rather would have uh, a full init system to where I could do system services properly. But again, most people don't care about this. And if you do care about it, that brings us to the next point. The big thing a lot of times folks use Linux desktop for is the customization. They love the productivity, the customizability, and the modularity of all of Linux. They can change the file explorer. They can change the way it looks. They can do tiling window managers. They can do everything you could possibly imagine. And that's what makes Linux Linux, uh, really, when you're using it as a desktop, at least. Now, for the more professional system user that has to be in Windows all the time, I don't know if it makes sense to have Linux anymore for that person. If they don't care about this type of thing, like there's still privacy and security concerns with telemetry and other things in Windows. But again, that kind of speaks to more of a Linux desktop user that's already over there. It's not gonna really sway any existing Windows users, I don't think. And that's, that's the big thing here is it's more for that working professional that needs to have all those Windows utilities because uh, I, when I'm working and I'm like, hey, I need to go ahead and make changes to like group policy, I can just do gpedit.msc, kind of look up everything I need to do, or maybe I need to do a remote session and I just want to do mstsc and then load up remote desktop. I have all those tools that I use in business right here in the Windows session. But then I'm like, oh crap, I need to get into those Linux servers and then I can just come into here and just do, you know what, I need to log into that one server I have for uh, DNS. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up and we'll accept this fingerprint and sign in. And this is just a better experience. Yes, PowerShell and Windows has SH capabilities, but this is a full-blown, I've always enjoyed the Linux experience a lot better when it comes to SSH and SCP for that matter. So there's some things that are just better in Linux and now you can actually use those using WSL. So I find this, uh, the big pro here is for system and system admins and, and mainly pro programmers that are, were using Linux or had to use Linux to really kind of develop things. And now WSL kind of bridges those gaps for that those working professionals. For the Linux desktop user, obviously this didn't this didn't matter at all. A lot of people care about, you know, the privacy security or the modularity and customizability of Linux. Those users this doesn't do anything for because you still have all the Windows fixins that most people don't like. For me, I'm kind of like all three of these users. I'll still keep my dual boot. I'm not going to delete that. I still love my Debian install for a lot of the customiz customizations I do, but it's still so nice when I'm in Windows to be able to do all these things and not have to boot into that if I don't want to. And that is the beauty of WSL. It comes with pros and cons. It's not for everybody, but it has gone from me just going, this thing's hot garbage to hey, this isn't so bad for a lot of working professionals now, which is great. I still recommend people dual boot just so you can have uh, experience it for yourself so you, you fully understand both operating systems. I love both for what they are. Now, at the end of the day, I'm in Windows a lot more because of WSL because it has so many of those Linuxy features now. I can do a lot of the SSH, the things I loved about it, 
the things that I miss and why I still have a dual boot of Linux is mainly a lot of the functionality and productivity that I gain from Linux desktop. When you have that customizability and you can change it however you want it, you can really be more efficient in the Linux realm. But again, just depends on you. Let me know which one you like the best. Do you use WSL? Or did you actually convert from Linux to Windows with WSL? I think that's the main fear a lot of Linux folks have. I don't really see this happening, but uh, if that elusive user out there that uh, did switch from Linux to Windows, let me know, and y'all be nice to him in the comments if that person does exist, because I'd be curious to get that person's feedback. And with that, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next one.